for many new developments, neighbors, elected officials, the general public are usually interested in how this development will impact them. And one of the most prominent impacts is related to traffic. So most large projects are going to have a traffic study is what will generally be referred to as. But then more specifically within the industry, they're known as traffic impact analysis or traffic impact studies or some variation of, of those terms or something similar. And these TIAs or TISs can be required when there's a substantial traffic generator that's being developed. And it really is site specific and, and jurisdiction specific about when you have that threshold, what's the minimum threshold for needing a TIA or TIS. But that's typically when you have hundreds of residential units, so maybe an apartment building with hundreds of units or a development with hundreds of single family homes, that type of thing, or high value, high volume commercial uses which are fast food restaurants, shopping malls, grocery stores, big box stores, and other similar large traffic generators. The geographic scope is also important to consider, and it's typically limited to nearby intersections. And this also is something that varies by jurisdiction, and usually it's a, a collaborative process between the developer and the public agency to figure out which set of intersections will be most impacted. And the larger the project, the larger that scope so for a small project, you may only look at one or two nearby intersections, but for a large development, it may be a mile or two in, uh, in radius that you may look at for the potential impacts. Overall, it's created to help understand the expected impacts of a particular development, which involves both an evaluation of the existing traffic conditions. So what are the what are the conditions today? Or is the traffic flowing smoothly and there's very little congestion? Or is it already a congested environment? And then look to that prediction of the future traffic conditions. And part of that is looking at both the background traffic volume. So what would it be without the development? And then we also want to layer on top of that what the impact of the development will be on those traffic conditions. The analysis periods usually focus on the peak time periods, and that's typically a morning peak hour and an afternoon peak hour. Sometimes it can include a midday or a lunch peak period, and it's based on methodologies from the Highway Capacity Manual to understand the operational impacts of the development within the TIA. In terms of mitigation measures, so what happens if it is determined that there are negative impacts on that traffic or roadway system, those usually involve adding turn lanes, adding additional through lanes to help with the capacity. Maybe it's adding a traffic signal or other traffic control devices. And that again will be reviewed by that agency within the jurisdiction to figure out what mitigation measures are necessary for this development to be approved. And fundamental within the TIA process is the four step process. This is well known to traffic engineers and it really is about project planning. There's much larger system-wide transportation planning that goes on, but this four-step process really kind of focuses on a specific project, a specific development. And implicit in this process is that trips are produced or attracted based on a function of the land use and for that specific purpose. The four steps that are included in this our trip generation. So that's how many trips are produced or attracted by trip purpose. And the common standard source for this is the ITE trip generation handbook. We also have trip distribution. And this is where we ask the question, where are the trips coming from or going to? So as they leave the development, are they going left or right, north, south, east, west? Typically, you'll use existing traffic counts to help inform where those trips will come from or go to. Uh, as well as just what's in the broader region where those trips may be attracted or, or produce what direction they may be headed. Mode split, so what, what modes will those trips use? And in a lot of cases in the United States, that's going to be a very auto automobile heavy focus. Depending on your alternative modes of transportation, you may have transit and bicycle and pedestrian trips uh, that would lessen the automobile trips that will be using and accessing the development. And then traffic assignment. So this is really a combination of the 
the prior steps, what specific route or path will those trips use? So of course that's mode specific and then which direction they're gonna be heading. So that's the trip distribution and then how many of those trips that are actually generated. So this is a, a summary of that four step process that's, that's implicit and heavily used within the TIA process.